Welcome, Welcome to, to another, another video. video. <laughs> now this is a, a little bit of a special video. We're going to discuss how we met each other. Now, I actually, I have to tell you all, all of you guys, I like to do things in a very sort of natural way with my videos. I like to wing things. I didn't tell her we we're going to make this video, so I am putting her on the spot. <laughs> I to see I'm embarrassed. <laughs> well, anyway, um, so please forgive any mistakes or anything like that because we're just going to spitball this one. So, quite a few people have asked how we met each other, and uh, I think it's just fair to be straightforward and tell them the story. So, do you want to start or should I start? Maybe. <laughs> you want to start? Maybe you. Okay, alright. Well, as you know, she's a doctor, right? What kind of doctor are you? General practitioner. Yep, correct. And um, I've, I've always had this rule about, you know, my career here in China. And whenever I've been teaching students or training doctors or whatever, um, I've always had a rule that you never mix business and pleasure together. I've never dated a student before. It's just not the kind of thing I do. Um, but there was something very special about her. Um, well, maybe you could tell us about your little group of doctors. Where were you going? Uh, we were going to Australia for a short time training, about three months. That's right, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, I took the, this class and they were a little different from most of the doctors that I trained before. See, the majority of the doctors that get these opportunities to go overseas, they're usually... Oh, this is it. They are usually in their 50s, you know, um, late 40s, early 50s. And these are the people that end up going overseas through connections and things like that. But this was a new group of fairly young doctors. Mm -hmm. Everyone in her class was fairly young, I'd say, right? <laughs> not that young, not, about 30 years. You know, well, not everybody, but yeah. Yeah, I'd say young, definitely younger than the most of the people uh -huh. that I taught. And I thought she was very uh, different and very special because out of all the people I trained in the past she seemed the most open to adventure and excitement <laughs> I mean uh, when you when you finally did go to Australia um, of course you know we finished the course and you know it's just normal sort of thing I, mm. I trained them they learned and then they mm. went and you went there for three months right yeah we kind of stayed in touch and um, it turned out that she had done all sorts of interesting things while she was in Australia right like what are the cool things you did there Sky, skydive. Yeah, she yeah. went skydiving. Mm -hmm. Trust me, if you know Chinese people like I do, that's <laughs> not a very common thing for Chinese people to do, right? How many of your Maybe. friends have gone skydiving? Uh, only, only me and another friend because I forced her to try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. And what did you think? Yeah, it's awesome. Mm. Yeah, it's a very nice experience, I think. Yeah. I would like to try again. Yeah, you see yeah. what I mean? So. <laughs> She, she always struck me as being different, more adventurous, more positive, more happy, and um, I always had an interest in her just as a, an interesting person. And then she came back after, you know, the whole thing in Australia, and um, we got together so she could show me some of the photos and things that she'd taken over there, right? Mm. Then what happened next? Uh, we talk about bike. Yep. Yeah. We started talking about motorcycles, and uh, you wanted to come out and try ride the the CB that I had. Yeah, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think of that? Oh, it's so powerful. Yes, yeah, yeah. too fast. <laughs> but lots of fun, right? Yeah. 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 So I took her for a, a couple of rides on the CB, mm -hmm. and then you wanted to learn how to how to ride. Hmm. And how did that go? Uh, uh. <laughs> Was it easy? <laughs> Not that easy at the beginning, yeah. yeah. But not too difficult, also. Just difficult to doing well, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, anyone who knows, learning to ride a motorcycle is not the easiest thing in the world. A, a real motorcycle, you've got gears, you've got the clutch. You know, you have to learn how to control everything all at the same time. It's not that easy, and you did a very good job. I think so. Maybe. Anyway, she did learn fairly quickly how to ride, and we used to meet up once a week, and I'd teach her how to ride. Mm. And uh, things kind of went from there, right? Not me, <laughs> you. <laughs> me? I always think you're my teacher. Oh, really? Yeah. So you didn't have any interest at all? Oh, you're my teacher. Oh, really? Yeah. 
I don't believe you. So why, <laughs> why did you want to come learn how to ride a motorcycle? Because you're a good teacher. Oh, really? <laughs> this one's full of nonsense. Anyway. <laughs> well, no, he's a good man. I mean, yeah, because he, we have a very special situation because at that time, she's married. No, he is married. No, you're married. Well, I was uh, at the married. end of my marriage. I was go <laughs> pretty much going through a divorce at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I still have a boyfriend at that moment. So like uh, I just respect him, and uh, of course I think he's a good man. But you know, someone, you know, I think maybe it's impossible to date or together. Yeah. So I just respect him, and yeah, I think he's a really good teacher, always very patient for me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was a bit of an interesting situation that we were in because I also respected you, and nothing ever happened, and it just yeah, yeah, nothing happened really. We 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 never touch each each other, we never touch hand or you yeah, know yeah. any part of body really, <laughs> really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, as things went on, uh, the circumstances changed. Um, you know, I got I got divorced over time, and you know, I was going through that whole thing with Beard Girl. I got divorced. You broke up with your boyfriend, mm -hmm. and then then something could happen after that. Right? Yeah, but it's still surprised when you tell me you are mm -hmm. in love with me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> still surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, I guess I'm not very good at being obvious when it comes to that kind of thing. But you are happy about that, right? Mm -hmm. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, not to get too personal or anything like that, but we really, you know, we're very grateful that we found each other because I think she's the most amazing girl I've ever met mm. and you know cultural and racial barriers aside I honestly do you know in life from my experience anyway it's you, you you always learn from mistakes right you keep making mistakes until you finally you know learn your lesson and you you learn that this is the correct way to do things and in this situation for me anyway I went through a lot of bad relationships in my life I kept making the wrong mistakes choosing the wrong kind of you know people and I finally found the right person and uh, I couldn't be happier you know I had actually reached a point in my life to be honest where I thought that's it there there just isn't a, a person out there who's really the proper person for me I just always thought that I just have to put up with and deal with you know second best until I met her how about you <laughs> well when I first time meeting I just uh, feeling like ah, oh, what a great man. <laughs> Wish he's not married. <laughs> well. uh, and and then he's. Well, I am married now. Yeah, with me. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, so he's my dream man. <laughs> <laughs> and she's my dream girl. So, you know, it's it's rare in life when you find somebody that you just know is the right person. And that's why I couldn't let this opportunity pass me by. I've never been happier in the world. I absolutely love her. I think she's the bee's knees and we've been together for a long time now and I still feel the same way. And uh, yeah, we're, we're married and that's the way it is. I have no desire to chase after any other women. Mm -hmm. I'm done, you know, she's the one for me. He is a proof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the proof, I suppose. Cool. Now, of course, having a cross-cultural relationship is not the easiest thing in the world. There are a lot of barriers that both sides have to overcome, obviously. You have to deal with uh, the Chinese traditions, which will definitely not be in line with your Western traditions. There are some things that we just can't accept or we just don't want to accept in our Western traditions. But same goes for, you know, Chinese people accepting foreigners. So maybe, I mean, I could talk about this forever, but I won't because you guys get that from me all the time. I'd like her to explain to you guys some of the difficulties of dating a foreigner. Uh, from a Chinese perspective, uh, so I mean, yeah, the beginning is really not easy to date with foreigner because not not for my personal because the friend, my parent, you know, people around me would think like, why you really want to date with foreigner? Because I mean, no future because they won't live here forever, right? So what happens if they just you know break up and then uh, I don't know do something bad and then run away? Yeah, something like that. And um, yeah, and they always have a lot of question about uh, the relationship between yeah me and and uh, Winston, like uh, how you meet each other and how you organize the life or something. 
Yeah, a lot of questions. That's why I, at the beginning I hide, I hide um, to some of my friends. Like I didn't tell them my boyfriend is a foreigner. Yeah, but now we get married, so yeah, everyone know. Yeah. So they also upset it and uh, wish we're happy. Yeah, yeah so it's great. Yeah. Yeah, and that's something I, I need to tell all my Western fellow Western men out there. If you do get into a relationship with a Chinese girl, don't be surprised if they keep it a secret, and don't. Don't be too insulted. I know for me it kind of feels insulting that you get together with someone and they don't want to tell anyone, but I think it's quite common in Chinese culture. They want to make sure that it's a sure thing before they let anyone know because it is a huge thing and there are a lot of barriers to overcome, especially in the traditional thinking of the family and friends. So don't be surprised if they try to keep your relationship under wraps for a while. Just prove to them that you're the right guy and they'll get over it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. So, anything you'd like to say to everybody before we finish our video? Mm -hmm. Let me say. Stay awesome. Cool, yeah. <laughs> All right. And be prepared to see her in a lot more videos in the future. Don't worry, she hasn't gone anywhere. I know a lot of people have been wondering, where's the welcome to another video? I've been covering a few serious topics recently that I didn't really want to put her face onto, so that's the main reason. But um, any kind of lighthearted stuff in the future, you know, she'll be on there. So. <laughs> Hope you guys will like it because I will always get you guys will feel bored, you know, to see me. Don't worry, I, I don't think anybody's bored to see me. Uh.